Hello and welcome to Trading Futures. My name is James Boyd. We welcome you on this Thursday morning. Oh my gosh, it's almost the weekend. So let's go ahead and get started. We welcome Grace, John, Sharon, Mary, Leah, Wiley, and many others. We welcome all of you. We also have Brent Morris in the chat, a fellow instructor. We welcome him as well. Quick reminder that this class is being, uh, it's live, but it's also uh, recorded as well. Quick heads up. If we go to, for example, uh, something I just want to share with you, I sent this out before, but uh, make sure with each of the each of the classes that you enjoy watching, feel free to actually save this playlist right to, let's say, uh, your favorites on your browser. And so that way you don't have to go search for them. You can just, uh, you'll see mine. I have a technical indicator, some class on Monday, using options on Tuesday, growth and value on Wednesday, trend on Thursday, futures, let's put it right there. So I don't have to go find them. I can click on any one of them and see the playlist for any of them. So make sure you kind of use that functionality, pick your favorite classes, get your playlist right at your fingertips. So just a quick heads up there. Now, just real quick, as we get started on trading futures, we're gonna be mostly talking about micro futures uh, as we'll talk about uh, products that maybe on a dollar basis don't, they're not gonna be worth as much if it goes in the direction, but it's a great way to start. Uh, now. As we get started, remember that uh, stock, ETF, and index options, equity options, are not suitable for all investors. Also understand that there's special risk inherent to option trading. Also remember when we talk about examples of futures and futures option trading that involves substantial risk, not suitable for investors, all, all investors. There's a separate risk disclosure statement for futures and options. Also understand that futures accounts are not protected by the SIPC. <clears throat> when we talk about the paper money software application, also known as the desktop, that is provided for educational purposes only. Now, quick heads up, we, we are doing on Friday, the mobile trading, whether it's a phone, whether it's an iPad, et cetera, okay? And that could be an Android device as well. So the material that we talk about in stock class or options or futures, just understand that we'll be teaching the software, the desktop, but they could also be used on the mobile as well or the web-based version. Now, just remember that all investing involves risk. So today, what I'd like to really focus on is, let's take a look at where the futures are today. Are there any indices that might be kind of setting up to go long and or short? Second, what we'll talk about is the trades from last week. And we said that each week, we kind of want to have a one or two trades that we might focus on. Now, when we talk about trade examples, those trade examples might come from an index, they might come from a commodity, they might even come from a currency. So just like in the stock market, you probably don't focus on just one sector, we're not gonna do that either. So we're gonna kind of focus on indexes today, commodities, and then we'll also bring up and introduce currencies with you as well. So after we look at our trades, we'll also look at current positions and then look and see what might be some new positions, okay? So first off, <clears throat> as we get started, let's go ahead and just take a look at the ES uh, futures. Now, I'm gonna kind of zoom in on this. I'm gonna kind of bring volume down a little bit and let's just kind of look at this right here, okay? Now, what you're gonna notice is this the indices are gonna be a little different. When you look at, let's say the ESs, that's the 20 period moving average, which has been red for since uh, April 1st, okay? You're gonna notice on the S&P, it went up for one day, went up for one day, and then outside that is pretty much been a waterfall to the downside. Here's the deal, if it gives you that signal, you at least want it to go in that direction. Does that make sense? So there's not like false alarms. It's been pretty daggum consistent. There's been never more than one day up. And then we saw, we saw one day up, sell, one day up, sell, one day up, sell, one day up, sell. We never saw any changes on the 20 period moving average. So it's been pretty consistent to the downside. How many of you have practiced, we introduced last week, going short. And when we say going short, we're talking about being bearish. How many of you practice going short? Okay, now for some of you say, my gosh, that was the first time I've ever done that. Well, and if you practice that, good for you. 
okay? Now, let's just kind of take a look at just where these support levels might be. When you look at the ESs, it's a little harder to kind of see where the horizontal support levels are, okay? And I'm going to kind of compare and contrast. When you look at the ESs, uh, 4850, maybe in the ballpark of 4950 or so, maybe in a level 5025. When I look at the ESs, it's harder to see where the horizontal support level is. Whereas if we bring up, let's say, the Dow futures forward slash YM, we can kind of see more of a defined level of horizontal support. So when things break down, let's say, uh, like in terms of diagonal support, price tends to drop down to horizontal support. So what I mean by this is when the stock, when, when excuse me, the futures were going up, 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 you break a diagonal line, then prices will tend to fall down to longer term horizontal supports. And what you're gonna notice is the Dow futures and the Russell, what's the ticker for the Russell? Forward slash M2K. And if you look at the Russell futures and you look at the Dow futures, those are the first two that are starting to reach an area of horizontal support. Now, uh, I'm gonna kind of mark these down as we talk about these. So when we say indice, uh, indexes, we're gonna kind of mark the forward slash YM, okay? Is that doing that? Go back. Okay, there we go. Hopefully, yeah, there you go. So forward slash MYM, and I'm gonna also include M2K. That's the Russell futures. And the one thing I wanna kind of note about these is these are uh, indices that have actually fallen down to horizontal, okay, horizontal support areas, okay? And I would actually say they're more, def the more defined area support than let's say NASDAQ and S&P, okay? Now we're gonna come back to this in just a moment, but this might be a trade idea. Now, some investors, they like to kind of look for these support areas and they like to buy them at a price level. Now, just because you fall down to a price level doesn't mean it's like gonna bounce back up, but they're thinking, could investors come in and buy and bid that index back up? That's the idea, we're gonna talk about that. Now, some people, they might just try to buy at a price level, irregardless if the moving averages are still not green. What I mean by the moving average is still not green, I'm talking about the line, okay? That either of them are green, okay? Now, when we look at the M forward slash M2K, what you're gonna see is when we look at the horizontal line there, kind of falling right back down to there. Where is there? There is about 1945. Now, we did the Dow futures last week, and some of you might be thinking, can we do the Russell today? I'd like to do that, okay? Kind of show some a little variation of product, okay? Now, what you're also gonna notice on the chart is up at the very top left-hand corner, it says futures. We just call this a futures label, okay? It shows us the tick size, the tick value, and the point value, okay? So when we show 10 cents, that 0 0.1, that's 10 cents, and that 10 cents is worth 50 cents if you get the direction right. If it goes a full point in your direction, up or down, well, point value would be $5. So let me recap this. If if you said, hey, I'm gonna go long or I'm gonna buy it, and it goes up in the direction you thought it was and based on your trade, on a one contract basis, it's $5. And then vice versa if you went short. So you gotta get the direction right, okay? Now, I sent this out already, but let me just kinda, I'll send this out again, just in case you did not see that. By the way, we've, we've had this historically. This is not as of uh, today. Now, by the way, Ken Rose actually made this script, so we tip our hat to him and say, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that as well. Okay, so Brent, put that back in there. So whenever we talk about different positions, or I should say products, if I bring up ES, it's automatically going to have that information there. If we bring up, let's say, even something like something you're not familiar with, maybe as much. If I brought up the e-micro euro dollar, it's going to bring up that as well. So that's what's kind of nice. Now, that information, we know when you click on the down arrow and you go to that tab where it says futures, 
that information is there if you dig in for it. But what's now nice is you don't have to dig into that. Now, this information will show you what the initial margin is on a one contract basis. But now we can see what's the tick size, what's the tick value, and what is that one point worth. So that's the value to that label. Okay, now, so first off, when we look at the indices, kind of just kind of summarizing, Dow and Russell, kind of near an area of horizontal support. We, we're going to show an example of taking a long position at the area of horizontal support. Okay, we're going to come back to that in just a moment. Now, last week's Example, examples, plural. Now, we had two examples. And one of those examples, now, by the way, we're going to go to the monitor tab. And when you go to the monitor tab, we're going to go to where it shows uh, right there, that account statement. Now, if I take a look at that right there, I'm going to go to that. And I'm just going to say, hey, we want to go back to last week. Okay, so eight days ago from today. And one of the trade examples was the forward slash MYM. So this is really the Dow futures. Now, what you're going to notice is it's going to show the date of the entry, April 11th. It was the last trade that we did of last week, and it was sell minus one. So that's a short position, wanting the Dow futures to fall. We thought that index was one of the weaker ones. Okay, it, we did it a short example, and it went short at 38,552. Now, we put a target on this. We said if the Dow futures then fall down to maybe where we thought the support level was, which might be horizontal support now, that buyback price was 38,100. So what we want to do is just kind of quickly take a look is how many points was that? Well, that was about, if my math is right, it was about 452 points, okay? Is that correct? Yeah, 452 points. And every point was worth, on a one contract basis, 50 cents, okay? Because we're talking about the, not the YM, we're talking about the MYM, the micro Dow futures. So when we actually look at kind of what that gain was pre-commission, it was $226. Minus the commission of 450, 225 to get in, 225 to get out. That net gain after commission was $221.50. Now, for some of you, how many of you had a pretty good idea that maybe the market might go down last week? Okay. This might have been the first time where you said, I took a bearish position and I tried to hedge my portfolio. This was an example of a hedge. So this portfolio would have been down. 221 more dollars had this portfolio not done the hedge of being bearish, the Dow futures. Are there any questions on this short example? Now, I think when we talk about being long or bullish and short and bearish, how many people truly understand short? And the answer is not that many people. So we know in the world of stocks and options, there's not just long, there's short. You go long bullish, short bearish, okay? They don't teach short in, in college, okay? So we just want to have a full understanding when we're, gonna, we're going to. Short is going to be a part of this because when we talk about futures, we want to learn how do we hedge a portfolio, okay? Or how do I do a bearish position on the index? Now, if we take a look at this, so that was the Dow futures, 221.50 on that since last week. We go back to let, and we're going to do this each week, okay? When we take a look at, let's say, the other one, which is the MNQ. Now, the MNQ, there was a comment made, can we do a future where there's a shorter target? So we showed the example of the NASDAQ futures. What's interesting on this one, this was done first last week at 752, and it went long, bought, plus one, and you're going to see it was purchased at 18265 Okay, now what's off, kind of a little interesting is a couple hours later, it went to, you know, 1207 my time, it went up to 18,464. Okay, so how many points was that? Uh, if my math is right, it was 199 points. What is the point value on the micro NASDAQ? 
Type that in the chat. And remember, you're going to get better and better. Out. So if I said to you, what's the, what's, the value, what's the value per point on the micro S&P, the Russell, the Dow? You're going to know it's like the back of your hand. You do it over and over and over again. You're not even going to have to think about it. We know on a per contract basis of the micro NASDAQ, it's $2. So when we look at, let's say, gross, free commission, I mean, the gain was $399. Less the commission, $225 to get in, $225 to get out. The net profit on that was uh, $394.50. So the point is actually this is each week we want to kind of look and see what happened to the trades, plus and minus. When you look at, let's say, since last week, these two trades were really $615 combined post commission. When you take a look at this account, which is about 56000 that was about 1.1% up, okay, uh, since last week. And this portfolio is not even down since last week. So this, these two hedges, or I should say the two futures trades, helped $615 worth, which might help offset some of the stock and option positions that if they were bullish and they went down, that they could help offset some. Okay, now I know you're dying and you're saying, can we show some new positions? Yes, but I want to kind of show you our past trades as well. Okay, now Greg says, I am confused about the moving averages. I was, I was used to using the 1030. Okay, now the comment, and we've made this before, but we'll re, we'll re express this. A couple months ago, the market became choppier. So, Greg, let me ask you a very direct question, okay? If you're in a choppier market at that point in time, and what we did is back, I think it was fall of last year, we kind of got in this up, down, up, down, up, down, very compressed. Would you want moving averages that were longer or shorter in a more up and down type of choppy market condition. Now remember, if you use that 10, 20 moving average crossover, it's gonna be more sensitive and more timely to those choppier moves. If you use a 10, 30, that's really kind of more for trending market conditions. So if you're recognizing the index is not really like trending, you could actually say, I'm gonna to move to a shorter term setting like a 1020. If you start to see that James, this market is trending and it's trending and it's trending and it's trending, you could use the 1030 in that type of situation because well, it's trending better. So going back, I think it was probably August, September, October of last year, we went to a 1020. Since that point, we never adjusted back to a 1030, which we could, okay? But the chart that we've been using is a 1020. We will use either or. If you're in a choppier market conditions, we're going to use the 1020. If we're more in a trending market condition, okay, we could use the 1030. Okay, Greg, does that answer your question? Yeah. So this right here. Now, by the way, if you said I don't even know how to change it, just real quick before we look at a new example, we're going to go to the Edit Studies icon. Okay. So right there, Edit Studies. And if I go to edit studies, if Greg says, mine says 30, okay, fine. So let's do that. We're going to go to the little settings icon right here. Fine. Click on it. And we're going to go back to where it says Greg's might say 30. Okay. So on his chart, how do I change it? You're now going to notice that this will say 30. We're going to change it to 20. So that's not that bad. Wherever it says 30, take it out, take, put it to 20. If you wanted that, okay, click on okay. Now the problem is, this whole moving average cloud is based on what time frame? It's based on a 10, uh, 10, 20. So if Greg says 10, 10 and 30, okay, and he wants to change it to 10 and 20, we want to make sure the whole cloud is also stating which moving averages you're using. So when we say the cloud, what is that? What is that? Well, that's the shading between the moving average lines, okay? So how do you change that? You're gonna click on that little icon again, edit studies. We're gonna go right to the whole moving average right there. I'm gonna click on that settings. Now, if I go to that settings, if Greg says 30 and we take that out and say put 20, now that shading is gonna be right, right based on the moving averages of 10 days and 20 days, okay? 
there. All right, now let's kind of go back to, so we talked about first off the indices, okay? We're gonna look at those two. We talked about last week examples, a long and short of the Dow and the NASDAQ. Let's kind of talk about, let's say, some current positions briefly. Now, the current positions I want to look at is gold, okay? And I want to kind of review a stop, okay? Now, let's kind of bring up gold just real quick. Let me show you the position. Now, if we take a look at gold, what's a little unusual about gold, can anyone tell me what's a little unusual about gold that we don't always see? Now, again, how can we see which moving average we're using? We're using a 10. There we see the 10. And we see the 20 right there. There we can see it. Now, the question is always, how do I know which one it is? Whichever moving average is closer to the price, that's the shorter one, okay? Now, when you look at gold, what's a little unusual about this is we had a crossover to the downside, okay? The 10 went below the 20. And when it did that, we've kind of seen gold go down, up, down, up. And now the shorter term moving average is looking up at the 20. So what does that probably tell us about the trend? Not a problem, Greg, good question. So if, if the 10 is below the 20, and what is the position? Is it long or short? Well, it's been long. Let's go back to activity and positions. We're going to take a look at this right here. And the position on gold is long gold futures at the $2,200 price level. And the mark value, think of that, what's the price now? $2,396. Okay? Now, what you're now going to see if I go to the charts, oh, by the way, when was that position entered? It was entered in about three weeks ago, okay? So if we go back to this and take a look at this, we can now see, well, how much is it worth if you get the direction right on a one-point basis? Answer, $10, okay, $10. So if this was your position, I want to kind of talk about a stop. So what might be a little concerning is the shorter-term moving average going below the lagging period moving average. Not the greatest sign, kind of showing there might be some choppy price action. Second, if someone said, well, I'm gonna set my stop down here, they would just be giving back a lot of that potential gain. Now, if I take a look at this, if someone set a stop like down there, down there is about 98 points, 100 points. If someone set a stop there, 100 points, and every point being worth $10, that's giving back $1,000 of the $2,000-ish of profit. Now, how many of you don't want to do that? Many investors might feel the same way as you do. Yeah, I don't really like that. So what we're going to do in this example, just briefly, is we're going to take today's open price and yesterday's pretty much closing price, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to set a stop right underneath today's open and yesterday's close. Where is that? 2376. Now, there's no scientific, mathematically proven, perfect stop levels. You kind of just have to ask the question, how far below that support level are you willing to let it drop? Let's say in our, uh, our kind of number, we're going to set the stop at 10 points below where we see the support level or where we're willing to let it drop below. And if that price right now is at 23.95 and we let it drop down to 23.66, how many points is that? That's 29 points. Okay, so 29 points and those 29 points are worth, answer, $10. Well, if we take a look at this, we would be giving back, I'm putting in parentheses, $290 of the 2,000-ish dollars the portfolio is up now. So it's kind of like we're giving back, let's just say, I don't know, what is that, what percentage-wise, 290 up, 2,000. We're giving up, let's just say, we're giving back 15%-ish 
of the current profit, okay? Now, nobody likes to give something back, nobody, okay? So, but the thing is, we're trying to see, can this area bounce? How do we set the stop? And by the way, I'm gonna put a target on this one as well. You're gonna notice over the last couple of days, what has acted like an area of resistance? I think many people would say, James, that 20 period moving average has acted like a little wall right there. Where is that resistance area? It's probably right around the 2410 area. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a kind of target in this consolidation at 2410 and a stop at 2366. Okay. So we talked about some past positions that were like entered and exited. But what about management of existing like gold? Well, when I take a look at this, I'm going to go to the monitor tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to expand this position. Okay, just click on that little triangle. We click on the triangle, it shows the position itself. Like a stock position, we're going to right click on that line. When we right click on that line, we're going to see where it says, hey, create a closing order. And this gives us some options. You want to close it like now? Do you want to just set a stop on it? Or do you want to put a bracket like a stop and a target? We're going to use the bracket. What we're now going to do is when we say with OCO bracket, okay, now by the way, this is the same way if we had option or stock. The first line is going to be the target. How do we know it's the target? Well, because it's the limit price. We're going to put that limit, the target at 2410, okay, and make that good till canceled. Okay, now. When we take a look at the stop, we already made mention of that. Where's the stop price? We're going to put it right at uh, 23.66, okay? GTC, right there. Now, when we do that, this is just a bracket. If it goes to the target, it cancels the stop. If it goes to the stop, it's going to cancel the target. That's all it is. We're now going to go down to where it says confirm and send. And note, it's not going to be two commissions. It's going to be one commission. You either go to the target or the stop, okay? Now remember, this is good till canceled, and let's just review why we're here. This is the June expiration, okay? So now what we wanna do is if that's, if, if that's what we're good at, or if that's what we're willing to say, okay, that's what I want, I'm gonna send that order. And we're just now gonna go back to the monitor tab, and now we can see where it says sell, just click on it, and it's gonna show the bracket order right there, all right? so. I want to kind of keep an eye on that because that one was actually something I made the comment yesterday. If the market is going to get a tradable bottom, when I say market, the SP, Dow, Russell, NASDAQ, you typically want gold and the US dollar to drop. US dollar, gold, sometimes can be a safety area where people hide as stocks are falling. So, if we were to get a tradable bottom, this will normally drop and equities might bounce back to the upside. We're gonna keep an eye on that. With that point, we're setting a tight stop on gold. Now, let's go back to something just briefly. We're gonna go back to the forward slash MYM just for a moment, okay? Now, I'm gonna look at, now, I, I need you to understand not all of us are in the same spot as far as, as, far as what we know, okay? If I brought up a short example, some of you might say, I don't even know what short is, okay? I want to make sure we practice a long example, one or two each week, okay? Now, some of you might like large caps. Some of you might say, I like small caps. We're going to show the example of both. So that way, if you like large caps, we're going to focus on Dow. If, you, if you're like Jerry, Jerry says, I like small caps. We're going to show both the Dow Futures Long and the Russell. Okay, now when I take a look at the forward slash MYM, we're talking about the Dow futures. Now, if I take a look at the Dow futures, what you're now going to notice is, okay, remember for every one point, it's 50 cents. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the chart, right click, we're going to go down to where it says buy custom, and we're going to say with OCO bracket. Now, I think many stock investors have said in the past, geez, I'd like to maybe just buy the index. But they maybe haven't bought the index or a product that tracks the index because, well, it's blast expensive. It's four or 500 bucks, okay? Now, 
wonder if someone just said, I want to use Dow futures as a way to kind of show my idea or my sentiment towards the index itself. Now, the difference between buying a product that tracks the index, like Dow, versus a future is this has an expiration, number one. Two, it trades 23 hours-ish a day, okay? And it could be entered or exited overnight. It's not just market hours, okay? Now, what we're going to do is, in this case, buy custom with OCO bracket. Now, when I click on that, you're now going to see that we get three lines. The first line is in green because that's a long position. Check. Now, what I want to do on this is I would like to kind of talk about the downside first. What I'm going to do on this is we're going to kind of say, where were those intraday lows that we saw just from two to three days ago? Well, just from two to three days ago is at 37839 Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set, now remember, there's no scientifically proven best way to set that stop below those areas. How much are you willing to let it drop? What if the investor said, you know, I'm willing to let it drop 200 points below there? Well, 200 points below there would be 37,639. Now, if we said data GTC, what we're trying to assess is how many points between the entry and the stop is there. Now, it's my math isn't perfect, but if we want perfect, let's bring up the calculator. 38,184 less 37,639. The point is 545. We're going to take those points and just times it by what's every point worth? 50 cents. And when we do that, we're going to get a number, 545 times 50 cents. And what you're now going to see is it's $272.50. So this 545 is the difference between that entry number and the stop number. Now, wait, is the stop guaranteed? No. Do we ever say anything's guaranteed? No. Not at least in terms of the products we talked about. Okay. This is the tr – this is the – price to sell, but it doesn't mean that's what it's filled at, okay? Now, I'm going to take, take that number times by 50 cents. And when we do that, we get 272.50. That's the downside forecasted loss. I say forecasted, because we don't know what the fill is going to be. Now, the upside target, we're going to make that GTC. Check, check. When we go back to this and say, if the Dow futures were to bounce back, where might you say it could bounce back to? Okay. Well, if we look at the Dow futures, now some very shallow up retracements might be uh, five uh, thirty-eight thousand six hundred. If we got a little bit more aggressive, let's say thirty-nine thousand ish. Now we're going to set that target that if that index were to snap back to the upside to 39,000, sell into that strength, okay? Now, again, do the math in your head. If we go from about 38,000, almost 200, to 39,000, how many points is that? It's about 800 points. 800 points times 50 cents, we know in our head it's 400 bucks, okay? Now, we're going to go day to GTC. Now, we don't normally show examples of buying into something that's selling off into a horizontal support. Now, what I just said last, buying into a horizontal support is critical. This is not into a downtrend of lower lows and lower highs where there's no visible areas of support. When you get down to an area of support, those who are short might cover and go long to exit their positions, just kind of like our last example. And those who were not in a position might go long near those areas of support. So you could have kind of two things happening. Bears exiting, and to, to exit, they would have to go long. And the new investors who want to enter, they go long. So you kind of get a little double whammy effect, okay? Now, what we're going to see in this case is let's go back to this order, long that price. Now, that price has fallen some. Now, when I unhook this, okay, and hopefully... It's not going to change. Let me just uh, double check something. I just want to make sure those uh, numbers. 
I'm going to verify that. That price. Now, by the way, what happens, for example, if I put 38,184 and we're at 38,140, are they going to fill me at 38,184? No, probably not. But they're probably going to fill me at the highest ask price, okay, which is at 38,138. Let's see what happens here for just a moment, okay? And we already talked about that stop. There's the commission entry exit. On a one contract basis, we're gonna do this in the margin account. The margin account, the buying power effect is gonna be a little bit less. Let's see where this fills. I want you to note that where that price is, where's the limit? The limit is just saying the cap on what the investor is willing to buy it at, send the order. Now, what we're now gonna see at the bottom is, where did it fill? It filled at, 38,149. So even though our, our buy limit was 35 points higher, it didn't fill that level, but it did fill pretty much close to the ask price, okay? Now, the one that we're entering or entered was really the June expiration, and we see that listed down below. Now, one of the investors said, James, I changed my mind, I wanna hurry and get out. Well, let's say we did, right click. First thing we could do is, cancel these orders, right click, cancel OCO group. Now, how many of you have ever said, James, I know I set up a bracket order, but my gosh, I didn't know I could be up, up or down 200 bucks, whatever. I just want to take the game. And this is what some people like to do. Now, we do not show that. We're trying to get bigger ranges, if you will, okay? But some people, they like to play that or try to say, look, I set a goal for myself. Some people, that's why they like maybe doing futures. We can cancel the OCO group and then try to sell based upon maybe you hit your profit target, whatever. Okay, I just want to show that. Now, let's go back to just real quick, the Russell for just a moment. M. Now, by the way, if you said, James, where are the products where I could see them in a list? Remember, if you hit the drop down right there and you go to that tab where it says futures, we're now going to see the list, and that list is extensive. Micro 10-year yield futures. Geez, that's kind of interesting, okay? So we, we talked about these interest rates rising. Is there a product that where the investor could try to trade the direction of interest rates? Uh, yeah. Forex last 10Y, as an example, not the only one, okay? Now, this is looking at the interest rate itself. We know that it's not just the interest rate, there's also the price as well. And that's where you go into different products. Now you're gonna notice that up here at the top, bunch of uh, currency examples, there's Bitcoin, et cetera. But we're gonna go down to where we get into the micros. The micros are gonna be in the M, from the alphabet of A to Z, we're at the M. There's the E-mini Russell 2000. Now. We don't talk about the Russell that much. Some people really enjoy it. So I'm gonna listen to what you kind of wanna maybe learn. We're gonna use the example of this one right here, okay? Now, what's nice about this is we can see the tick size, the tick value, but especially if you said, oh, I wanna know how much money I need to set aside to enter the position per contract. Uh, given this account of a margin account, answer $715. So, so let's show this example, but I wanna do this a little different. Now, some people, when they, you get a, when it falls down to an area of support, they might be thinking, well, James, I'm not gonna buy into a price level. I don't see any changes on the moving average color yet. Well, what we're gonna do is, now Brent has been very good on Tuesdays to teach a class on using the Thinkorswim platform and he's been doing a heavy dose on order types. If someone said, I like the setup, but I want the price to get at or above a certain level, well, that would really be called a buy stop order, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, look, I don't wanna get in until we at least get above the 20 period moving average. We're gonna set a price to get in at 2000. Now, again, full disclosure, if we set up a buy stop order, and by the way, we, get, we can change this, we're going to right click on that price level, buy custom, and we're going to do with an OCO bracket. 
Now, many people might be scared. They're like, my gosh, if you do a buy stop order, how do I know, for example, where it's going to fill at? That's a market order. Well, if 2000 is the marker that you want to use as far as get above this price and go long, we could also put a cap on what it could fill at. And that's just simply called a buy stop limit. Okay. So the buy stop limit is the same idea. Price would need to get to 2000 or higher, but then you can place a cap on what you're comfortable in buying it up to. Okay, so let's kind of use 2010. Now again, there's no magic, oh, this is scientifically gonna be proven. The wider you make this range between the stop and the limit, the greater the chance you have to get filled if it goes up. But for example, if you make that range narrower, it has to be more perfect, okay? So if I put something like in 20, 2050, well, there's a 50 point range in which it can fill at from 2000 to 2050. If it gaps over 2050 and never falls back down in this range, it's not gonna fill or shouldn't fill. So we're gonna try to make that range about 10 points. Now, remember, we don't know if it's gonna do that today or not. We're gonna go day to GTC. Now, here's the thing we need to know. If it goes to that price or higher, and it can fill between 2000 and 2010, if it fills, is, did anyone say? Did anyone say that? No, no one said if it goes to that price, it's guaranteed to go up. No one said that. I love when people kind of put words in my mouth. I never said that. Now, and I, even if you're thinking that, I'm gonna tell you that's not the right way to think. Because just because that price goes up to that, doesn't mean it's guaranteed to go up. The reason why they're just saying, look, if it goes up to that price level, that could be a bullish signal, but it's a signal, it's a setup, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a target just like we did on, on the Dow Futures. Now, where did we fall down from? Where did we have like a horizontal support level? Well, kind of where we broke down below the horizontal support level was right around about 2060 or so. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of put a target. A lot of times you'll see uh, indexes, stocks, whatever. They will check back to where they fell down from. And we're going to put a target right at 2060-ish right there. Where is the horizontal support level? Answer. It's right at 1943. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a stop underneath that support level at 1933, okay? Remember, there's no magic number there. How many points? It's how many points are you willing to give? We're going to go day to GTC. Now, notice, that why do some people just buy at a price level? Because it makes the reward to risk seem more attractive, okay? So if someone says, well, I want it to bounce up, that confirmation of bouncing up ain't free, and it makes the reward risk ratio less attractive. Now, we don't use reward risk because you can kind of fabricate some of the numbers, okay? And also, reward risk doesn't really kind of take into consideration order types and how that changes reward risk. It's kind of like a shallow discussion on reward risk. You need to kind of talk about order types, how it affects reward risk. This reward risk is actually less than if you actually were to just buy at a price level like we did before. Now, what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna do one contract only, okay? There's the target, there's the stop. Now, we don't know if it's gonna fill. Just be and in that case, we're gonna go to the gear. We're gonna click on that gear right there and we're gonna say, look, if this does not fill in the next week, so we're gonna take it back to let's say the 25th, okay, the 25th. If this does not fill, by next week, cancel the order. So this is a time-based trade. You got seven days, you might be different. We're gonna say seven days, and if it doesn't fill, cancel the order. We wanna reevaluate, is it really something the investor might consider? Note the commission, note the buying power effect, and we're gonna send the order, done. So the two trades we did here today was long the, long the Dow at horizontal support, and then long the Russell 
if it were to breach this this uh, second moving a- second moving average, which is the twenty period, and that's why that buy stop limit is sitting right there. Okay, so the 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 Dow was entered. Okay, it filled. This one, it's looking for the confirmation that it's snapping back to the upside. So I'm out of my time here today. Uh, keep an eye on, for example, gold. If that drops, probably means that the equity futures are healing a little bit and maybe bouncing back to the upside. We talked about last week examples. We adjusted the stop and we entered two new examples. Now, remember that coming up just right after this, and let's get to the right page, coming up right after this, on this Thursday, the 18th, let's bring that up. Uh, you're going to see that Ben Watson will be doing a class on long verticals and diagonals. Now, also, kind of quick reminder that with what we discussed, it was done for example, illustrative purposes only. Go out and practice long examples, especially if you're new in the paper money account, to get used to the fluctuation and how it works. If you say, James, I'm not ready yet to practice bearish trades, that's okay. Got to start somewhere. Okay, practice long examples in the paper money account and see if it's something you would consider for yourself. This has been the class on trading futures. Thank you, Brent Moores, and to all of you this morning. I'll be on later today on trading the trend uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern. With that said, thank you so much. Take care. Stay tuned for Ben Watson coming up shortly. Bye-bye.